Welcome to the Photo Booth Supply Co. YouTube page. My name is Catalina. I'm the owner of Modern Photo Booth. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to sell different photo booths, especially if you have iPad booths and maybe you're thinking of adding a DSLR booth to the mix. I'm gonna to talk to you about the differences between the two booths and how to make sure that you don't make one look bad while selling the features of both. If you first started out with an iPad booth, we all know how nice and easy they are to set up, but maybe your business is growing and you're thinking of adding a DSLR. Maybe you saw the Guac booth has launched and you're like, wow, this is amazing and beautiful and it's already using the Salsa app, which is very true. It's very easy to use. It's beautiful. I've had one for months. I love this booth and I've used a lot of different DSLR booths. Now I use the old legacy booth that Photo Booth Supply Co. actually first started out selling. And this one's kind of like a Frankenstein booth and I say this because the booth is actually made up of a bunch of different parts. Our legacy booths were made up of a Canon DSLR and then it had a Surface Pro that was running this horrible software called Social Booth that never worked properly. Anyways we've come a long way from those days we now use different software on our legacy booths but it's because there was no easy option. Now that the Guac booth is coming out and it runs Salsa app with a DSLR camera we can't wait to add even more of these to our fleet of of photo booths. Now with iPad booths, obviously we all know that the camera quality is never going to be the same as a DSLR, but that doesn't mean that you can't get amazing photos out of your iPad booth. It all comes down to light at the end of the day and knowing how to use your equipment. Now, when you have an iPad booth versus a DSLR booth, you're probably wondering, how am I gonna sell these two booths? Like, how do I make people understand the difference between them? Obviously your DSLR booth is going to have a much higher quality image output and there's two reasons for this. One, the sensor on a DSLR camera is leaps and bounds bigger than what is on your phone, but you also have a strobe light that is attached to your photo booth, which is creating this beautiful, even studio lighting. And you have full control over your environment because you're flashing light at it rather than having an illuminated LED like you do on your iPad booth. Just to give you a comparison, this is a photo from an iPad booth and then this is a photo from a DSLR booth booth and these were taken in the exact same environment in the studio actually and almost right next to each other at the same time of the day so you'll kind of see the difference and again you can always add additional lighting to your iPad booth to get a better quality but that's not what we're talking about we're talking about the best way to sell both of them the biggest problem that people have is they don't want to devalue their iPad booth by telling people that the DSLR booth is a better picture quality but you don't have to the way that we sell our iPad booth versus our DSLR booth is is that we will market our iPad booths to be selfie booths, meaning that they're meant for one to two people because in reality, that is what they were made for. It isn't until like iPad booths became wildly popular in the photo booth community that people tried cramming like tons of people in them and using them like a regular photo booth. That's not what they were built for. And unless you have a ton of extra lighting, then you're not gonna get very good outputs from it. So the digital booths are marketed as selfie booths for one to two people. And we don't generally print with them. We make very few exceptions where we print with our salsa booth, mostly because it's a little bit harder to print with an iPad booth since none of them support wired printing as of yet. Our guac booth, it does actually have wired printing. And in that case, this one becomes our booth that we tell people to get if they plan on having a lot of people in their photos. So for weddings, we'll always ask, do you wanna have no more than two people in your photo or do you want two or more? Do you wanna be able to do groups? If they say they wanna be able to do groups, then it's no brainer they're going with the DSLR booth. If they want something that's just fun for one or two people, then we're going to push them towards the digital booth. Printing, of course, is another thing that will help us determine which booth is best for our clients. We will only print with a DSLR booth or any booth that allows for hardwired printing just because a lot less things can go wrong. Not that there's anything wrong with printing using a dongle or anything like that from an iPad booth. I just personally prefer to not have to train our staff on two different ways of doing things. So our digital booths are strictly digital and our DSLR our booths are meant for printing. Again, there's always exceptions to the rules, but for the majority of our events, we like to keep them like that. Now, what if somebody asks you about the quality? At the end of the day, they should be paying more for a photo booth that is three times the cost of an iPad booth. The camera equipment that is in a DSLR booth is not just the professional camera, but you're also going to be getting the studio flash in there. And while it runs Salsa app and it's really easy for you to set it up, nine out of 10 times your defaults 
settings are going to work in pretty much every single environment and you're going to get beautiful outputs every single time. So they should definitely be charging more for your DSLR booth. And a great way to kind of differentiate between both of them is you can call one of them like a pro or a studio booth or something like that versus the other one, which would be like digital or a selfie booth or, you know, something like that. So again, without devaluing your photo booths, just mention to people that one is good for one to two people and then the other one is good for groups as well. I would also suggest that you guys make specific packages for each one. So when we send out our packages, we always like to include one digital booth, especially if people don't know what they want. So we'll usually have like a print booth, a glam booth, and then a digital slash selfie booth for them to pick from. It also depends on their budget, of course. Digital booths are really fantastic for drop-off booths. You know, those ones have a bit of a lower price point. It's six hours long. It's very basic programming that we offer for those ones. We drop it off we make sure all the camera settings are good. We turn on guided access and then we come back and we get it six hours later. So if budget is a concern, you can talk about how your digital iPad booth can be a digital drop off. Whereas I would never leave a DSLR or my guac booth alone anywhere, especially if you have a printer with it. Now, if you just want to start simple, I would just recommend having one be a print booth and one not be a print booth. But again, you never want to tell people that an iPad booth has a lesser quality photo when it comes to having them pick between them, you always want to talk to them about what the photo booth can and can't do versus the other one, and then let them decide what is going to be the best option for their event and budget. I hope that information was helpful for you in trying to figure out how to sell your iPad booth versus your DSLR. And if you are considering getting a DSLR style photo booth, please take a look at the Guac booth. It is absolutely beautiful, so easy to use, and it has wired printing, which is unreal. But again, make sure that you don't devalue any of your other photo booths when you add another booth they each have their own unique thing that they do so just figure out which booth that you have is best for what and make sure you sell the features that it's good at versus comparing the two of them and putting them up against each other you never want to do that so always sell the features that that particular booth is good at doing and you will have no problem trying to sell them to your clients as always don't forget to hit subscribe hit the bell so you get notified the next time we post a video and i will see you on the next one